Tuscan braised boar stew or ragu di cinghiale is a very special dish and this particular recipe has been passed down by generations of Florentine butchers. And today is your lucky day because you're about to embark on a journey that's going to uncover all there is to know about this exquisite dish. Now picture this, you're sitting in this little osteria in Tuscany. The aroma of simmering stew fills the air as a steaming plate of chewy thick pappardelle arrives, generously entangled in succulent pieces of wild boar ragu. I'll guide you through this unforgettable experience right in your own kitchen complete with wine pairing suggestions and my own personal recommendation on where to try this dish next time you find yourself in Florence. Now a little bit about this recipe. It's a Tuscan family heirloom. It was handed down from Nonna Carla, the beloved grandmother of two renowned Cioni butchers in Florence, who have upheld the family tradition since their great-great-grandfather's days in 1880. And this recipe that I found that you're about to make is the testament to a family's dedication in preserving the rich cultural heritage of Tuscan cuisine. So get your pen and paper ready because this one is going to stay in your family's recipe books forever. You're essentially going to be marinating and braising some wild boar meat in delicious Tuscan wine and serving it in thick, chewy egg ribbon noodles. In Italy, the wild boar thrives in the shade of Tuscan oak forests, boasting a unique flavor that combines the best of pork and game. While it's commonly used in cured meats like prosciutto and salami, cooking it into this dish is truly unparalleled. Due to its formidable toughness, the wild boar emerged as a challenging adversary for hunters, symbolizing the ultimate test of hunting skill and prowess. In the eyes of hunters, successfully hunting down a boar was not merely a feat, but a testament to one's expertise and courage in the wild. This perception was especially prevalent during the time of the Medicis, renowned patrons of the arts and avid game hunters. For the Medicis and others of their ilk, pursuing and conquering the wild boar was not just a pastime, but a grand display of their status, courage, and mastery over nature's fiercest creatures. And don't worry, if you can't go hunting any boar or can't manage to put your hands on some, you could try using pasture-raised pork, though it won't have the same gamey flavor. Let me know what you think is the best substitute for boar meat. I'm sure there's many people watching this video that would like to know. All right, let's talk about wine, because when making ragu di cinghiale, you're going to need at least least two bottles, one for yourself and one for the boar, because why does he get all the fun? Let's go see what we have. In both cases, I recommend staying in the region of Tuscany. For the marinade, I would recommend going for a Chianti. The reason being it's got a fresh acidity that's going to work really well in taming the wildness of the boar. But come time to serve your wild boar ragu, you're going to need a wine that can hold its own, rival the beast and look it straight in the eyes. Enter Brunello di Montalcino. It's like the boar's sophisticated counterpart. Think dark, earthy tones, flavors of dried fruits and tobacco. It's going to work so well with this dish. You won't regret it.
Indeed, the boar really has a special place in Tuscan and Florentine culture. In Florence, before heading to the restaurant, I like to show my guests around and I usually bring them to the Loggia del Mercato Nuovo to visit the Porcellino, which is a bronze boar statue, a replica of a gift given from Pope Pius IV to none other than Cosimo de' Medici. In Siena and Florence, for example, it was often prepared in a dolce forte sauce, incorporating sweet spice cakes like pan forte and cavallucci. The boar would be simmered in a mixture of chocolate, butter, raisins, pine nuts, hazelnuts, and vinegar. Now, this may sound unusual to our standards today, but during the Renaissance, they really loved this mix of sweet and sour and salty. It provided a lot of contrast in their cuisine. But today, we're not preparing that, so let's go back and check on our boar. Look at this beautiful ragu di cinghiale. This is a beauty. Look, and then you top it with the pieces like this. Now, before you go grabbing your parmigiano, just try it as is. You'll see it doesn't need anything. It stands on its own. And it tastes exactly like the trattoria I wanted to recommend to you. It's called Antichi Cancelli, and it's close to the train station in Florence. It's a good, classic, rustical, Tuscan Trattoria, where you can find really good fare for simple prices. I really recommend it, but you know, if you're not in Tuscany, this right here, this is going to fly you there. The last papardelle. Now, the only downside to this dish is that it always disappears so fast. It's a culinary tragedy every time. But if you're not, if you're like me and you're already dreaming about the next dish you should cook, I got something special in mind. Stick around. I'll see you soon.